you can enter a low Earth orbit. And once in orbit, it's very hard to get out of orbit. Unless you have energy to spare, you're sort of locked in here, falling around the Earth forever. That's great for things we want to stay up, like space stations and satellites. And so we moved the majority of humanity's space infrastructure to this place, just a few hundred kilometers above the surface. Just high enough so that the atmosphere is so thin that orbiting things can stay up for centuries before air resistance can slow them enough to bring them back to Earth. But this is also the source of our deadly trap. Rockets are really metal cylinders that keep big piles of fuel in place. Whenever a portion of the fuel has been spent, the empty tanks are dropped to make the rocket lighter. Some parts crash down to Earth or burn up in the atmosphere. But most of the useless rocket parts stay up and begin to orbit the planet. After decades of space travel, low Earth orbit is a junkyard of spent boosters, broken satellites and millions of pieces of shrapnel from missile tests and explosions. Right now, we know of around 2,600 defunct satellites, 10,000 objects bigger than a monitor, 20,000 as large as an apple, 500,000 pieces the size of a marble, and at least 100 million parts so small they can't be tracked. This debris is moving at speeds of up to 30,000 kilometers per hour, circling Earth on crisscrossing orbits multiple times a day. Orbital speeds are so fast that being hit by debris the size of a pea is like being shot by a plasma gun. On impact, the debris vaporizes, releasing enough energy to punch holes straight through solid metal. So, we've covered the space around our planet with millions of deadly pieces of destruction. And we also put a trillion dollar global infrastructure network right in the danger zone. It performs critical duties essential to the modern world. Global communication. GPS and navigation, collecting weather data, looking out for asteroids, and all manner of scientific discoveries. Things we would miss very much if they suddenly went away. If just one pea-sized bullet hits one of our 1,100 working satellites, it will be destroyed instantly. Three or four satellites are already being destroyed this way every year. As the number of satellites and the amount of junk in orbit is expected to grow tenfold in the next decade, we're approaching a tipping point. But the worst thing in space is not tiny pieces of junk. The worst thing would be an unstoppable chain reaction that turns a lot of non-junk things into junk. For example, if two satellites hit each other in just the right way. If satellites collide, they don't stop and fall out of the sky. It's more of a splash than a crash. Orbital speeds are so fast, solid pieces spray right through each other, transforming the two satellites into clouds of thousands of little things still fast enough to destroy more satellites. This could trigger the slowest and most destructive sort of domino effect, a collision cascade. Like a shotgun spray, each collision creates more bullets. What was once a single tiny target, very unlikely to hit anything, becomes a wall of destruction hungry to make more. As more and more satellites are destroyed, the destruction accelerates exponentially, eventually destroying everything parked in orbit. But space is very empty, so the first few collisions may take a long time. By the time we realize what's happening, it's too late. One year, one satellite is destroyed, and that's no big deal. The next year, five. The year after, 50, until there's nothing left. The situation in orbit is rapidly worsening, and we may already be past the point of no return. Within 10 years, space around Earth may no longer be viable for long-term satellites or rockets. The worst-case scenario is horrifying. A debris field made of hundreds of millions of pieces, many too small to track, moving at 30,000 kilometers per hour. It would effectively create a deadly barrier around Earth, possibly too dangerous to cross. Dreams of moon bases, Mars colonies, or space travel at all may be set back centuries. And the loss of our space infrastructure would send some of the technology we rely on daily back to the 1970s.